Welcome to another episode of Legal Angle with Emmanuel Doblar Alawale. Uh, today we will be talking about immigration law. And the topic of discussion is going to be ways to get family-based green card under U.S. immigration law. First of all, uh, family-based green cards are permanent resident cards that you can get through a family member who petitions for you. We'll be discussing who can file, who can benefit, how to file, how to benefit, and also we'll be talking about those you cannot file for or those who cannot benefit from family-based green cards. Let's start with who can file a petition. U.S. American citizens can file petition for their family members. Permanent residents or green card holders can also file petition for family members. But not all family members can be petitioned for. So now let's talk about who can be petitioned for. Spouses of U.S. citizens, children of U.S. citizens, siblings of U.S. citizens, parents of U.S. citizens. Also, permanent residents can also file for their spouses. They can also file for their children. And they can also file for their um, for the, they can only file for their children and their spouses. And what is the process of filing for a spouse? To file for a spouse, a U.S. citizen must, at least, you must first get married <laughs> to be able to prove that that person is your spouse. After getting married, you have to, the marriage has to be valid. The marriage has to be done legally. A lot of people have marriages that are not recognized under U.S. law. Marriages done by proxy, you know, in some countries, uh, people can stand in to, for somebody to get married. Under U.S. law, that is not recognized. So for a marriage to be valid under U.S. law, it must have been entered in person. You have to be present when that marriage took place. If it's in the church, if it's in the court, you have to be present at the time the marriage was entered into for it to be valid. And also for people who have been married before the current marriage, they must be legally free to get married by the time they enter into the new marriage. Meaning that if there was an existing marriage, that marriage must be legally terminated. That is, they have to be a divorce. And the divorce has to be legal. We have cases where people will obtain uh, divorce decrees that are not valid. They will just uh, send somebody to court to uh, get a divorce decree for them in a foreign country. Most of those divorces will not be deemed legal. And if prior marriages are not legally terminated or legally terminated, the new marriage will not be recognized under the law. So when such a person, whether they're a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, when they now file for their spouses, those petitions or applications will be denied. The reason is not is because the current marriage will not be recognized. Because when you are still legally married to somebody else and you obtain a fraudulent decree or a divorce decree where you're not present, that your new marriage is deemed to be legally void. So meaning that you're still kind of married to your old spouse. The same way that you cannot get married by proxy, you can't also get divorced by proxy. You have to either be present to get a divorce or the other spouse must have been the one to get the divorce against you. But the divorce itself has to be legal. Now, talking about the petition and who can file. I mentioned earlier that you can file for your spouses, you can file for your children, 
and then you can also file for a parent. That, that is, U.S. citizen can do that. Those are called immediate relatives. Immediate relatives are spouses of U.S. citizens, children of U.S. citizens under the age of 21, under the age of 21 and unmarried, and parents of U.S. citizens. Those three categories are deemed to be high priority when it comes to family-based green card under immigration law. So for instance, if parent of a U.S. citizen, children of U.S. citizen under the age of 21, and spouses of U.S. citizens, if they are present in the United States illegally, and a U.S. citizen petition for them, they will be forgiven for the overstay. And when I mean illegally, I mean uh, overstay. If let's say they came in with a valid visa or they came in through the border, they were inspected, they went through, um, they went through border patrol and they were admitted into the United States. And one way or the other, or the other they overstayed their visas. If a US citizen who is a parent, or if a parent, a US citizen who's a parent filed for a child under the age of 21 and who's all, if the child is also married, filed for their spouses, husband or wife, or their, or their parent, those beneficiaries will be able to obtain a green card without having to leave the country. However, in a situation where the immediate relative came into the US without a valid visa, maybe they snuck in through the border, you know, maybe through uh, Texas or any of these but at times, in such a situation, those immediate relatives, even though they are spouses, children of US citizen, or parents of US citizens, even though they fall into that category, they will find it difficult to obtain a green card. They will need something called a waiver. They will need to file a waiver. And if they file the waiver, that is waiver of inadmissibility because they are deemed to be inadmissible since they came into the country illegally in the first place. So they just can say, you know what? Let me have my green card. They will need to file something called waiver of inadmissibility, which is provisional waiver of inadmissibility. And to be able to get that, they will have to show or prove that if they were not allowed to obtain the green card or to obtain the visa, the US citizen will suffer extreme hardship, not them. It has to be the U.S. citizen. It has to be the U.S. citizen uh, ben uh, petitioner, either the parent or spouse or children filing for them will suffer unusual hardship. But in a situation when someone comes in with a valid visa and they overstay and they got married to a U.S. citizen, it will be easier for them to adjust their status to obtain a green card. And in the situation where a child under the age of 21 came into the United States with a valid visa, overstay, and their parent became a US citizen, it would be easy for them to adjust status. The same thing with parents. If a parent of a US citizen comes into the country legally, however, they overstay, their children, you know, children over the age of 21, a US citizen children over the age of 21 can file for them they will be able to obtain their green card to adjust without any problem. Now, let's talk about permanent residents. Those are green card holders. Green card holders can also file for their spouses and children under the age of 21. However, there's a difference between how the spouses and children can adjust status. If a permanent resident file for their spouse, a visa will not be immediately available. It takes about 18 months for 18 months or three years for a visa to become available for their spouses or their children under the age of 21 and unmarried. So needless to say, if you're a green card holder and your spouse and children are in the United States and they have overstayed their visa, if you file for them, 
they might not be able to adjust status while in the United States because they have to be in valid status by the time they approve the petition. But if they're outside the country and they've never been into the United States, they will just have to go through the visa processing, go to the embassy and obtain their visa. If they are in the country and an overstayed, they will not be able to adjust status because they have to be in legal status by the time the petition is approved. But US citizens, spouses, parents and children or married children under the age of 21 have a visa immediately available to them. So if they're in the country and, and overstayed, they will be able to adjust without any issue. And how do you file the petition for your spouses? Well, the best thing to do is to contact a very good attorney who knows what they're doing. But you can also go to USCIS.gov to file a form. The form to petition for immediate relative is called Form I-130. That is the first step, at least, for the U.S. government to recognize the relationship you are claiming. If they are in the United States, you can file uh, adjustment of status together with that petition for immediate relative. So everything can be approved at the same time. However, if the relatives are outside the United States, you can only file the first form, which is form I-130, for them to recognize that relationship. After the form or the petition has been approved, you know, the processing of that petition take, can take between three months to a year. It's been taking longer now because of COVID. And in some situations, it can even take less than three months. After that petition has been approved, the next step is to, if they are outside the country, the USCIS will send the file to the National Visa Center. At that point, the petitioner will have to hand it over to the applicant, but the petitioner can, if they retain an attorney over here, the attorney can help the beneficiary apply for a visa with the National Visa Center. When the application has been completed, you know, with the National Visa Center, they will review it and all the documents, if they think everything is good, they will now send the file to the embassy in the country where the petitioner will be coming from. The embassy will then now make an arrangement to have the beneficiary come for a visa interview. If everything goes well and the visa, if everything goes well, the green card will be approved and the beneficiary can you know, buy their plane ticket and come to the United States as a permanent resident. The process is different in the United States if the petitioner, if the beneficiary are present in the United States. If they're present in the United States, you can either do everything all together or you can still do it in two ways. If you decide to have the I-130 petition to file that file first, then my, you know, after that is approved, then they will now have to file for adjustment of status. They can either call them for an interview, call you for an interview while the first uh, petition for alien relative is pending, or they can call you for interview for during both, uh, during both process, the adjustment of status process and the petition for alien relative process. But if everything is filed together, and if it is a spouse's petition, meaning a US citizen spouse is filing for their husband and wife, they will definitely call you for an interview. If everything goes well, the petition is approved, the adjustment of status is approved, and the husband or wife gets their green card. In situations where US citizens file for their parent, most of the time they don't call the parent in for interviews. Most of those applications are approved without interviews. In some rare occasions, they will summon the parent and the petitioner for interviews. If the relationship can be proven, it will be approved. 
sometimes DNA tests are required when people file for their parents or when they file for children under the age of 21. When DNA tests are required, once the DNA test has been done, if that relationship is proven, it is highly likely that that petition will be approved unless other issues comes up. Other issues that could come up could be affidavit of support or if the person they're petitioning for, which is the beneficiary, if they have some kind of uh, immigration violations in the past or some kind of criminal convictions in the past or some kind of immigration history that could render them inadmissible. And what are those things that could render people inadmissible? The range, there are different things that could make people inadmissible. Crimes of moral turpitude, that is crimes involving fraud, lying to immigration agents, presenting fraudulent documents, um, convictions of felonies, uh, violating uh, immigration laws, coming in illegally through the border, engaging in smuggling people into the country. Those are the kind of things that could make people to be ineligible for a visa or claiming to be a US citizen when they're not, registering to vote in US elections and actually voting. Those things do make people ineligible. And most of the people that can even, well, let's, when, when talking about registering to vote or voting illegally, most people that fall into that, that category are people that already have their green card. A lot of people who are permanent residents do not know that they are not eligible to vote. They are not supposed to register to vote. Some people mistakenly or ignorantly will register to vote and will actually vote. If the immigration discovers that, it is actually a deportable offense and they will not be able to become a naturalized citizen. If there's a discovery of claiming to be a US citizen when you're not or registering to vote, or actually voted, it is, can lead to deportation. So if you're a green card holder right now and you're thinking of registering or voting in the next election, please don't. It could get you deported from the United States. And for permanent residents who wants to petition for their spouses and children outside the United States, Note that it's going to take between 18 months to three years. That is pre-COVID for them to be able to obtain a green card to come to the United States. And when they come into the United States, they will still have to wait to become, at least uh, maintain their green card to be eligible for naturalization. For spouses of U.S. citizens, if they stay married to that U.S. citizen, and retain the green card for three years, they will be eligible to become a naturalized citizen. Then they can file for their own naturalization. Otherwise, if let's say the marriage did not work out and they got divorced, then they need to maintain that green card for five years before they can naturalize. For children of US citizens who become permanent residents under the age of 18, the moment they become permanent residents, they are also they also automatically become U.S. citizens. However, even though it's automatic, the parents still ask to apply for e either a, a certificate of citizenship for them or a U.S. passport. Or you can apply for both. It's better to apply for both, for a certificate of citizenship and a U.S. passport. But just because it's, it is automatic, like I said, it doesn't mean that the USCIS or the United States Immigration and uh, this is, you know, Immigration Services will send them, will automatically send them a US passport or certificate of citizenship. You have to actively apply for the citizenship. Otherwise, they may have to wait for five years to do it on their own. But they must have entered the United States under the age of 18. And when talking about children, those who are considered 
I priority, like I said, immediate relatives at children under the age of 21 who are unmarried. If a child under the age of 21, if a 15 year old gets married, they are no longer immediate relatives. And the time it's gonna take for them to adjust is going to be longer than if they are unmarried. Those who are unmarried and under the age of 21 are the ones that are given that high priority that I'm talking about. For a child under the age of 21 who is married, they go into the next category. It could take them between 18 months to three to four years before a visa will become available. And if in a situation where people file for a child who is unmarried and while that visa is pending, they got married. And if that discovery of the marriage is made known to uh, the immigration services, they become in ineligible to be considered as immediate relatives. So they push them to the next category. That means that they will have to wait until a visa becomes available. And now, can you know people ask this question? You know, I'm a permanent resident. Can I file for my parents? No, permanent residents cannot file their, for their parents. Or I'm a permanent resident. Can I file for my children over the age of 21? You can file for your children, but they have to be under the age of 21. You can file for children over the age of 21, but it's going to take a long time for them to be able to have a visa available. So if you are planning on filing for your children or your spouses as a permanent resident, it is best sometimes to wait until you become a naturalized citizen. So that way your spouses and children will have, they will, they will be able to come in faster than if they were coming in as beneficiaries of permanent residence provided that you've kept a residency for a while. And moreover, permanent residency or green card is a privilege and not a right because people with green card can still lose that. They can still lose, they can, they can lose their green card. If a green card holder commits certain crimes, they're deportable. Like I said before, for instance, if they claim to be a US citizen when they're not to get a job, or if they register for to vote, or if they vote in an if they, if they voted in an in, in an election, or if they commit uh, some kind of crimes like felonies, crimes of moral turpitude, or crimes that has to do with fraud, stealing, and things like that, those can make them deportable. And if their residency is being terminated it's also possible that it can affect the people that they are petitioned for. So if they could like, they could put everyone in removal proceedings just because the main petitioner is in their green card, you know, is being revoked. So that's why when a US citizen files, it has more credence because US citizens are high priority, the same as their spouses, and children under the age of 21 and parents. Questions that people also ask, people also ask the question, can I file for an adopted, a child I have adopted? Yes, US citizen can file for adopted children, but the adoption must have been finalized before the child reaches the age of 16. Any adoption finalized after the age of 16 is not recognized for immigration purposes. The adoption must have been finalized before the age of 16. And there are also other criteria that um, goes into the adoption process. The adoptions must be done legally. The person adopting the child must be present to make sure in the country where the child has been adopted. And the child must either be a partial orphan or a full orphan. What's a partial orphan? A partial orphan is someone whose one, at least one parent is dead. 
and the petitioner or the US citizen must prove that the other parent is incapable of caring for that child. A full orphan is one where both parents are dead. It is easier to prove these things if the child is, you know, if the child is being adopted from an orphanage. In that way, it is easier to prove. But in most instances, you have US citizens trying to adopt their family members, either nieces, nephews, or extended family members whose parents are deceased or one of the parents are deceased. So in that case, if it's one parent that is deceased, they have to prove that the other parent is incapable of caring for the child. And the child must be under the age of 16 by the time the adoption is finalized. Otherwise, they cannot be recognized as immediate relatives of US citizens who can come into the country using under the adoption petition category. And for you know, for children on there over the age of 21, it is still possible to file for them. US citizens can petition for children over the age of 21. It will just take longer for a visa to become available. It could take between three to five years for them to be able to obtain their visa. And when it comes to siblings, Permanent residents have asked the question, can I file for my brother? Can I file for my sister who is outside the US? No, green card holders cannot file for their siblings. However, US citizens can file for their siblings. US citizens can file for their parents. US citizens can file for their brothers. US citizens can file for their sisters. But that's a catch when filing for your siblings. Because siblings are not considered immediate relatives. They are not in that first category. So depending on the country you come from, it takes about 10 to 12 years for a visa to become available. There are some countries that it takes even longer, countries like China, India, Mexico, Philippines. It could take anything between 16 years to 20 years for a visa to become available for siblings. So if you're a US, US citizen and you're listening to this, you don't know whether you're still debating, shall I file for my brother, shall I file for my sister? If you intend to file for them, it's best to just do it now. Whether it's gonna take 10 or 12 years, the journey of 10 years starts one day. So, but the catch is filing for siblings. When, if, if, they, if you file for your siblings and they, during while the visa is pending, they come to the United States. They cannot stay in the United States to wait for the visa because they have to be in valid status at, by the time the visa is available for them to be able to adjust within the United States. If they are out of status, they cannot adjust status in the United States, they will have to leave the country and apply for a visa in the, from the country of origin. And in the instance where they are violated the terms of their visiting visa, it is highly likely that they will be denied. So needless to say, if you file a petition for a brother or sister and they were able to get a visiting visa to come to the United States, while that while a visa is not available, they should just honor the terms of that visa, they should not violate that term. If they violate the terms of that visa, they will be ineligible for a green card when it becomes available. And for siblings and parents of US citizens, our children of US, for our children of US citizens, when they get the green card, they get something called a permanent green card. But for spouses of US citizen who got married, who, who got, whose marriage is less than two years old, when they get a green card, they get something called a conditional green card, which is, you know, which people normally call two year green card. What that means is that the green card is only good for two years. 
when the, when it is 90 days to the two year anniversary of that green card, they have to file to remove the condition of that green card. It means that they have to prove that the marriage was valid at the time they filed the petition and at the time they enter it. Because initially when people file for their spouses, because most of the, the marriages knew they may not have a lot of proof. So uh, immigration services will give them the benefit, benefit of the doubt to say, okay, let's assume that this marriage is real. So even though they don't have a, a lot of evidence, they will approve it. In two years, when they come back to remove the conditions, they can't say that, oh, you know what? We don't have enough evidence. They have to show that the marriage was real and that during the marriage, they were able to build their life together, either have children together, um, live together, uh, commingle their finances. Uh, at least they have to do things that a married couple do to show, you know, to, to prove that the marriage was real. If they're able to prove that, then the permanent resident spouse will be given a permanent green card, which people normally call 10-year green card. If they remain married for the next year, that green card holder will be eligible to file for citizenship and they can then become naturalized citizen. People ask the question, what if I get married to an American citizen? I got a green card, but during the marriage, the marriage wasn't good. I'm abused or I'm not happy in the marriage and we got a divorce. Will I still be able to get a 10 year green card? Yes you will still be able to get a 10 year, 10 year green card. All you have to do is you have to prove to immigration that the marriage was real at the inception and that you guys actually live together as husband and wife and you have to prove that the marriage did not go well. You have to prove that either you are abused or that it was a real marriage. There may not be issue of abuse, but it just doesn't work out. But you still have to show evidence that the marriage was valid. And if you're able, even if you are divorced, you will still be able to get your permanent green card. As long as you're able to prove that the marriage was real when it started and that it just didn't work out. There in some rare situations, you have a situation where people get married to US citizens or permanent residents. And those US citizens and permanent residents were actually valid. There's something called VAWA. It's called Violence Against Women Act. Even though the act says women, men also can use it. If you're in a relationship with a permanent resident or a US citizen who is either physically abusive, emotionally abusive, or psychologically abusive, you will still be able to get a green card if you can prove that the marriage is real and that you are actually abused. In those situations, if you're filing a petition on the VAWA, all you need to do is to prove that you were married to a US citizen or permanent resident. So you're going to need proof of their citizenship or permanent residency. You're also going to need proof of the violence, proof of the abuse, and prove that you actually were or was in a valid marriage. If you're able to do all that, you'll be able to self-petition and get a green card. And the catch with that is that even if the marriage is less than two years old, by the time the abuse started, the green card you will obtain will be a permanent green card. It will not be conditional. It will be a permanent green card. And there are also situations where people get married to US citizens and those citizens die before the approval of the petition or even before they were able to file a petition. In a situation like that, there are applications or petitions that a widow or a widower can file to show that they were married to a US citizen and that US citizen died either before the petition was filed or before the petition has been approved. The same proof that you have to show if, you know, if they were alive is the same that you, is the same Evidence is the same evidence. You have to show that the marriage was real. You have to show that they were US citizen. You have to show evidence that you lived together. 
that you commingle assets, that you have bills together, yeah, either or you have children, things that will show that the marriage is real. If you're able to show that, they will still be able to get a green card, even though your American citizen spouse is dead. The same thing is not applicable for green card holders. If a spouse, if a green card holders, if a green card holder dies and they are married to uh, a non-citizen or a non-permanent resident, that non-immigrant will not be able to do the same. So only US citizen spouses can file uh, the petition as a widower or as a widow. And to cap it all up, if you need more information about this, you can either go to USCIS.gov or you can send an email to legalangle20 at gmail.com. Send email to legalangle20 at gmail.com. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Legal Angle. Until next time, stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you.